Okay, complex conjugate theorem. So the linear factoriz factorization theorem states that whatever the degree is of a polynomial, you can break it down into x minus c copies um, of factors, basically, where c is some complex numbers. Don't get thrown off by that. Um, the complex conjugate theorem, what you need to know about this is if you have a complex number that's going to be a zero, then you get its conjugate is also going to be a zero. So remember, conjugates are keep the same term, switch sign in between. So if you know a plus bi is a zero, a minus bi also gets to be a zero. So let's take a look at one of these. We have h of x is 3x to the fifth plus 24x cubed plus 48x. Our goal on this, pick out all the zeros, factor it completely. Um, pretty similar to all the directions we've had in this section. So as we get going on this, I'd probably start and think, can I just factor from the beginning? Well, we have three terms. They all seem to have multiples of three in them, and they all have x's. So let's pick out three x as our common factor. So if we remove that common factor, that's going to leave us with x to the fourth plus 8x squared plus 16 remaining inside a set of parentheses. And that's still equal to h of x. We've just rewritten it with pulling out a common factor. Um, let's see if we can factor this any further. I'm going to use the AC method on this. So focused on what's inside our set of parentheses, my A would be a 1, my C would be a 16. So 1 times 16 is 16. That's my number I'm going to write off to the side and list out all the different ways to factor 16. So 1 times 16 or 2 times 8 or 4 times 4 would all create 16. Now to pick out which pair that I actually want to utilize, I'm looking at this sign here that is positive 16. I want the pair that adds together to make our middle term a positive 8. So I think the only pair that's going to work is if we go 4 plus 4, we're going to add together 4 plus 4 makes 8. So we're going to bring along that 3x. Big set of parentheses, the first term comes along. We're going to split apart this middle term though, and we're going to utilize the fours that we just picked out off to the side as being the coefficients. So 4x squared and 4x squared. We need to make sure that these like terms, if you combine them back together, give us this positive 8x squared. So in this case, they're both going to be positive and then bring along the 16. Okay, now we've rewritten strategically what's inside this big set of parentheses so that we have four terms. With four terms, we like to fall back on factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms together, group the last two terms together, and get started on this factor. So we have 3x, big set of parentheses. These first two terms seem to have an x squared in common, so let's remove that x squared. That'll leave us with x squared plus 4 inside our set of parentheses for those first two terms. These last two terms, I believe they have a 4 in common. So let's use a positive 4, and that'll leave an x squared plus 4 inside a set of parentheses as well. Now it's important that you have the x squared plus 4 in both these sets of parentheses, that it's the same inside of both sets of parentheses. So bring down the 3x. What's inside the parentheses, the x squared plus 4 goes in one set. And what's out in front of the parentheses, I'm looking at this x squared with this plus 4 goes in the other set of parentheses. Now as this one turned out, we ended up with the exact same thing in both sets of parentheses. So what this is going to mean is we have two copies of the same thing. Okay, let's figure out where our zeros are. Okay, um, I don't think we'll be able to factor the x squared plus 4 very nicely. It's two terms, but it's not a difference of term, difference of squares, I should say. So off to the side real quickly, let's just go ahead and say, when does this equal zero? We can make this into a power equation pretty easily by moving that 4 to the other side by subtracting it. Now to get rid of the square, we will apply a square root to both sides not forgetting our plus and minus. So we can say our solution here is going to be plus or minus. The square root of negative 4 can break down to be 2i. So comp complex solutions. So now our zeros, if we want to list them out, we get a 0 at 0 from the 3x. We have negative 2i and positive 2i as well. And why I didn't set the other factor here equal to zero is it's going to produce the exact same complex solutions. So finally, let's give the factored form for this. So the 3x went along with our zero as zero. So that factor comes along. Now to break down either of these x squared plus fours, 
we're going to be using x plus 2i and x minus 2i. And remember, as you do these, if you know a zero, it's always x minus whatever the zero was will be a factor of your polynomial. Now we're almost there, but um, each one of these just accounts for one of these x squared plus fours. Since we had two copies of the same thing, they're each gonna produce the exact same factors. So what I'm gonna do is just list out with a multiplicity of two or an exponent of two on each one of these factors. Um, what that indicates is I get two copies of this. One came from this x squared plus four and the other came from this x squared plus four. So there we have it factored completely, picked out all the zeros. You'll notice the complex conjugates are both zeros here. This is zero plus two i, and this is zero minus two i, and they both worked out being complex zeros of this polynomial. All right, I hope this helps. Good luck.